Hello everyone and welcome to this week's scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to create all of the docking elements for a dockable script. This is the sort of other side of the previous floating tutorial I created, where we created the same type of UI here with multiple tabs and the all kinds of different elements like images, text, uh, buttons and different things like that that you can add. So today we're going to be taking a look at the dockable form which allows us to actually dock it wherever we want in After Effects and creating the same script we used before. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub as well as check out this code and try it out for yourself and make modifications to it. Follow us there for coding updates as well as Instagram where you can follow us for other updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP and join the channel and get cool perks as well. And also in the description, check out the links for AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to check out some other cool stuff I create. Now, if you haven't already seen the previous tutorial, the link for that will be in the description as well as right here with the little eye icon. And this is where I created the dockable form or sorry, the floating form of what we're creating today. That's just a floating script that we can move around but can't sort of inject and keep in the same place of the interface. But we're going to be creating the same kind of script and uh, it's going to allow us to dock it. So inside of Visual Studio Code, I'm going to navigate to my uh, script UI panels folder for whatever version of After Effects I'm using or whatever program I'm using if it allows script UI panels. And I'll hit select folder so that I can work inside this folder directly and then see the changes in here um, and see that it still works as a dockable script. So here's the original script. It's actually not too long, but there's quite a few elements inside of this big string here that we're going to need. And we're going to get started by just kind of starting with the bare bones. Um, I'm going to try and keep this up here for reference. In fact, I'll take a screenshot of it so we can use it as direct reference. And it is most likely that I will be loading up the UI many times, so I will need to reference uh, how this should look for the most part. Um, so we're going to clear out everything inside of our res variable except for the outer group. We're going to delete all of our defaults and that should be good. We're going to use the same kind of logos and stuff as before. I'm using this production crate logo for the main logo and then we'll also have these two icon buttons which I'll be sourcing from local files on my computer. So I have made tutorials before on how to make docking and floating scripts which have sort of different methods for the most part of creating them. Um, but we're going to be going over how to create each of these elements individually. Um, so I will be not going over each thing in depth, but uh, we will be going over each of the elements. So to start, we need this entire tabbed panel element. Um, now this is where things are kind of different from floating scripts because the way we call or create certain types of things is, is different. For example, tabs, tabbed panels, uh, they will actually be created as panels, and then we give it a type property to define whether it's a tabbed panel or a tab within that panel. So the first thing we need inside of our res string is going to be a tabbed panel. I'm going to call it a tabbed panel just so I don't forget, and the type of thing it's going to be is a panel. Now uh, we'll end this with our brackets and then comma slash to make sure we have a, a new line we can add here, and that's how we just create multiple line uh, strings and inside of here we can set it to a certain type which we need to actually tell it it's a tabbed panel. If not we can actually now close the script here and go to window all dockable. You can see we have an, a big empty thing that's because our panel doesn't have a name or anything within it. Um, so let's create our first tab. Tab 1 is going to be the variable name. We're going to create a new panel not going to be called a tab like it would be in a floating script, but the type here is going to be, as you might imagine, a tab. And again, I think this can be lowercase because it's a property. And then we'll want to end this, bring down our, uh, our bracket and our slash here. This goes on the inside. And now, Actually, let's also give it some text. So after the type, we'll have a comma, and the text of this tab will just say tab1. Now we can save it and relaunch the script and see that we have a relatively small uh, tabbed panel with our single tab inside of it. So perfect, we're already making progress. 
Let's go ahead and add our second tab just as a template. We'll add it right below here. Call it tab two. It's going to be the same type and with a different uh, text inside of it. And this should go ahead and create that for us. We now have our two tabs, which we can fill up with information. So looking back at our reference, we start off with an image inside of our first tab. And we have our logo binary that we're going to be using. So I'm going to say image, or we can say logo is equal to an image. Um, and I like to keep them empty and then do the image definitions later over here in my defaults. So if we wanted to take a look at this now, it would actually be, I believe, empty. Um, let me go ahead and launch this. And it actually gives me a bad argument. And that's because I forgot a comma right here. There's just these little tiny things in the rest string that can cause issues. So make sure you take it step by step. And yes, we have no image displayed. So if you wanted to go ahead, I was going to do this later, but we'll add the default now. We'll say my panel grp. And now we need to go into the tab panel, tab one dot logo. And we're going to change the image of that uh, to be our logo binary. So now when we run this, we're going to actually have that logo appearing there. Next, we have static text, a checkbox, and a radio button. So below our logo, we'll add uh, a variable for our text. We'll call text. It needs to be some static text. And we'll give the property called text. We'll just call it what it is. It is some static text. Then we will, after our bracket close, close our string line. And I'm honestly just going to copy and paste this two more times. This next one's going to be a checkbox. And then we also have a radio button. And the class names for those are capital checkbox and radio button camel cased uh, with the first one capitalized. And of course, we can also have text inside of these. So I can call this checkbox. I can call this my radio. And when we save this and relaunch it, you can see now we have uh, that set up. And of course, remember that you can also set up the orientation of your panels and your uh, groups and all that so that you can have things flowing from left to right or top to bottom. Lastly, we have two buttons. So we're going to create a because everything's flowing from top to bottom. If we were to create two buttons, they would be stacked on top to make them horizontal. We need to stack on a group to that column orientation and that group will have a row orientation. Uh, which allows us to have them left to right. So we'll create a button group, which is going to be a group. Um, we don't need to give it a name. So we'll just uh, go to a new line here. And inside of this button group, we're going to have two buttons, button one, which is a button. And we can just copy and paste that and have button two. We also want to have some text in these buttons, we can just say text, single quotes, button one copy and paste that and we have button two as well. Let's go ahead and view how this should be. And our first tab is not going to be complete. Looks like we have an error somewhere. If I remove my button group, the error is gone, correct. But when I add it, that's where we get the first problem. So we need to redo this. So we need to redo this and figure out why this button group is causing an issue. It's creating a group it starts and opens here. And then it ends here. The buttons inside of it have some text. If I just have the group, does it work? No. So maybe there's an issue with the group. I don't know if maybe groups require you to set an orientation. So let's just try and set it to row, as we mentioned. Relaunch. And now it of course works. One thing I did just notice is that we have an object static text here appearing for the name of our tab, which is bizarre because we have some simple text here that defines it as tab one. If I change the text to something say simple like two, it still is displaying as static text. This means that it's receiving a static text object, uh, which is this right here as the argument. And I think that why that might be is because this should be name, I believe, instead of text, because we need to tell it what the name. No, nope, that's not it either. So how I'm, so how might we find how this static text is getting leaked into there? 
we can try removing our static text and seeing if that removes the issue altogether. And perhaps it did, but why would that be leaking into the name there? Did I not close it? We have text tab one and that's closed properly. I think it's because we've called it text, which is such a simple name. Let's try changing this to temp text. And maybe because we have all this stuff already defined simply. Okay, so you know what the issue is? It's that this text field is called text. Let's call it something like temp text. And when we now run it, it should work appropriately because we were just using lowercase txt, text, and this is already what is um, used for all these property names. So I don't think we can do that. But now we have our first tab with a checkbox, a radio button, some static text, an image, and two buttons. Now let's go to tab two, where we will create the rest of the elements. This is going to be like icon buttons, sliders, and that sort of thing. So I'm actually referencing the floating panel here that we created previously. And in tab two, we're going to create a panel with a drop down list, a slider, and then another panel with two icon buttons. If so, if we can remember that, um, we're going to now go ahead and go into our tab two area. And we're going to start by creating a new panel. So I'm going to say panel one is going to be equal to a new panel. And we don't actually have to define the type this time because we've already defined our tabbed panel and our uh, tabbed tab type panel, tab panel and tab panel. So we don't have to define what kind of type this is because it's not a tab or a tabbed panel. So we can just add a name or some text if we want. And then we'll go ahead and add a new line here. And inside of here, we're going to start off with the drop down list. I'll call it DD. It's going to be equal to a drop down list which for now I'm going to keep empty. And then we're also going to create a slider. So I'll just say slider is going to be equal to a capital slider. Um, and we'll also define its values later. So hopefully now, just those few changes won't mess anything up. And they will we have an expected end bracket, I'm going to speculate once again, and try putting an orientation for my panel here. Let's make it uh, a column. Save it and rerun the script. Still a bad argument. So whenever this happens, the next step is to start deleting stuff until you figure out what is causing the issue, and then figure out why that particular thing is causing the issue. So in this case, it's not the drop down. And it's not the other, it's actually the panel that we're creating here that's causing the issue. So we have something called panel one, it's a normal type of panel with a column orientation shouldn't be an issue. We have a column orientation, maybe we can change to row. And that's still not it. So now that we've tried a whole bunch of things, and they haven't worked. Let's just go back a few steps and see that this works without this uh, panel, and it appears to work just fine without the panel. So what about this panel is causing an issue, we open it here, and we close it down here comma separating the values. Or maybe we don't need a comma. We have a group that starts here. We're missing the comma for our tab. That's I think what our issue is. We seem to be suffering a lot from missing commas, but let's hope that works. And yes, now we have a drop down and a slider, we can return the orientation of this back to a column. Um, and then we're going to add a button group or a button panel below this. So outside of this panel one, we're going to create panel two, which is a panel whose orientation is row type, we can go left to right, new line. And we're going to create two icon buttons. So we're going to have icon one, it's going to be icon button, which is empty. And we'll do two of them, one is icon one, one is icon two. And now we should be good to preview everything before we set up our defaults. We have tab one, and now we have tab two with our drop down, our slider, and two icon buttons. Let's now fill these few things with data so that we can actually have useful information inside of it. So firstly, we have our drop down list here. 
To access that, we'll need to go down to our defaults area and say my panel grp. We're still inside of our tabbed panel, of course, but now we're in tab two and we are now in panel one, which is also inside of tab two. And the element inside of here we want is our DD. We're going to add an item to it. And this item is just gonna be a test DD item. Then we'll take the, our DD as well. And we'll set the selection to zero. This way we actually have some information selected inside of our dropdown. And this should also increase the size. So as you can see here, we now have our test DD item, which is pre-selected. If we want to as well, we can set the range of our slider. So we'll access our slider in the same panel as our DD, but instead of DD, we'll say slider. So we can set the value to say 50, duplicate this line of code twice. And one of them is gonna be the min value, all lowercase, and the other will be the max value, all lowercase. So the min can be zero, maybe the max is 300, and the regular value is 50. And the last thing we need to do is set up our icon buttons to load a local image from our computer. You could, of course, use uh, binaries for this as well, but in this case, I'm just demonstrating how you can use both in the same script. So we'll grab our tabbed panel, tab two, and this is actually in panel two, not panel one. We'll grab our icon one, and we'll set the image to be this file here. We'll duplicate it. Instead of icon one, we'll set this to be icon two, and a different image altogether. Now when we save this and relaunch it in After Effects in tab two, we now have an item in our dropdown. Our slider is now set up to have min values, max values, and we have icon buttons loading local images from our computer. So now we have a dockable panel which we can put in our scripts UI folder and have it dock in our program and use all of these different elements combined in the same script if needed. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel and down in the description you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates where I'm also going to be putting this code for you to use yourself and also follow us down there on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas and hang out with some of our very knowledgeable and awesome members. And also in the description, check out the link to become a channel member, which can give you cool perks and help us out financially. And also down there, there's going to be some links to AE Scripts, Adobe Exchange, and Gumroad to check out some other cool products I create. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.